Mr. Beast is a Fortnite icon, but does he actually play Fortnite? There's rumors that he does, but the real answer might actually surprise you. Today, we're figuring out the truth behind his mysterious Fortnite account and eight more of Fortnite's greatest mysteries. And we have to start with the mystery of the Bigfoot NPC, because apparently there was a secret NPC that you could find on the map. But the thing is, he was extremely hard to find unless you knew where to look. So obviously Bigfoot is one of the most widely known urban legends and someone at Epic might be a believer because if you went to the bottom of the map to this abandoned house, there was a small chance you'd find a special NPC. I landed there half a dozen times and he finally spawned, but it wasn't Bigfoot. It was Bunker Jonesy and he was very interesting on his own and he had a lot of interesting dialogue to share, but you could also find an option to find Bigfoot. If you paid him 100 gold, he would set a mark on your screen with the location of Bigfoot, but it would disappear after just a few seconds. So you'd have to line up the mark on your screen and start walking in that direction and just hope that you run into Bigfoot. The thing is, he had a ton of spawns and he would just walk around on the outskirts of the map. But if you were lucky and you actually managed to find him, he would just say, I was never here. Fortnite also pretended that something was never there with the banned trailer mystery. On August 27th, 2021, Fortnite would upload a video to Twitter called Animated Comic Number 1. In the video, it promoted a crew pack skin called the Burning Wolf. Now, this skin is in the game, but the trailer was deleted just a few minutes after it went live. The video is in a completely different art style, and it's animated and has voice acting. There's a narrator, and at the end, it is revealed that it's Midas himself, played by Matt Mercer. But why would it be removed? That's the mystery, and I think the answer might look something like this. The skin was called The First of the First Shadows, and the video was called Animated Comic Number One, which suggests that we would be getting more, because there was supposed to be an entire First Shadow storyline with the Chaos Origins and another crew pack, Sierra. But the thing is, Midas was probably deeply involved in this whole story. He was rumored to be coming back to Fortnite for many, many years, but to this day, he hasn't returned. So I'm assuming when Epic decided to cancel Midas internally, they also made a decision to cancel this comic series. But what they really should have canceled is Fortnite's secret commercials. You might have seen YouTube ads for Fortnite showing the season trailer, but I guarantee you, you've never seen Chris Pratt in any of them. Buried deep in YouTube, there are these very, very strange commercials with Chris Pratt promoting Fortnite. He's yelling at the camera in Korean and he's telling us about Fortnite's $100 million competitive prize pool. He's kind of playing this American villain and he's egging them on to compete in the tournaments or else they're going to miss out on the prize pool. And if the Koreans don't try hard, they're not going to win that prize. He's also dressed up like he's in Squid Games, but why were these mysterious commercials made and why Chris Pratt? Well, in December 2018, Fortnite was actually hosting the Korea Open Tournament, which I bet a lot of you don't know about, but Tifu and Kitty Plays actually won. And they were trying to grow Fortnite there since Koreans are huge player bases of online multiplayer games. They obviously wanted Koreans to play in the Fortnite World Cup, but I don't know if these commercials really worked the way they wanted. They ended up using Chris Pratt, which was honestly just bizarre but not as bizarre as the mystery of what really happened to the Fortnite block. During the Game Awards, Fortnite would make a huge announcement, the block. It's an exciting way for people to create things and bring it into the game. Players would create their own POIs and submit it, and if it was good enough, Epic would actually bring it to the Fortnite map at the block. This is the first time Fortnite Creative was really in the spotlight and dropping at the block and seeing what people could create and create it was honestly pretty cool. It seems kind of innocent and just a good time, but what if I told you it had an insanely huge controversy that ended up getting it canceled? And the incident would happen in update 8.2. Players logged on and saw a brand new block called Mysterious Mansion. It was a haunted spooky mansion, a little dark for Fortnite. It had a teddy bear and there was a weird ritual, but when you went into the basement, you'd find something much worse. There was a rope with a chair kicked down under it, and it instantly caused an uproar in the community. And that same day, Epic removed the block and reverted it to the previous one. 
and I thought this was insane. I remember being live and everyone in the chat was going crazy about the block. And I just thought, how did this get through the moderation process? Later on in season X, the block got removed. And honestly, the drama it caused was probably one of the main reasons Epic has never brought it back. But speaking of Epic, we have to talk about the Donald Mustard stream mystery. So Donald Mustard is the creative director of Fortnite, but what people don't know is he's actually streamed Fortnite before, and this stream lives up to everything you might think. Back in Chapter 1 Season 2, he hopped on a stream with his brother Mustard Plays. The few people who were watching the live stream didn't even know that he was dropping so many hints about future Fortnite items and updates that wouldn't even come to the game for multiple chapters. For example, he described the llamas in Fortnite a whole season before they arrived. People are saying, how about llamas? <laughs> if they can blow it up, loot flies out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it gets even crazier. A few games later, he describes an item that wouldn't even come until Chapter 2, Season 7. The Railgun. We probably need, I think of like a, uh, like a railgun. You know, it's like oh, a gun sure. that you have to, you have to charge it up before you can fire it. And then an hour later, he describes a drink that lets you run faster and sprint, which we now have in Chapter 4, and it's the Slap Juice. An energy potion where... Uh, you like you take it and you can run faster. So it's kind of like a vehicle mode. Yep, we really like that idea. We think something like that is probably imminent. Now the mystery is, was this plan to give us something to look back on? I guess we'll never know, but there are still some things he described, like throwing axes and throwing knives. So if those ever come out, Donald Mustard might have been giving us the entire future of Fortnite five years early. But speaking of five years ago, we have to talk about the mystery of Fortnite's lost ammo. So Fortnite, as we all know, has different types of ammo. Medium, light, heavy, shotgun, and explosives. Five types in total. But what if I told you there was a six? And it's literally right in front of our eyes. In the most recent Star Wars update, they released the DC-15 rifle. And while everyone was happy to know that it was at least kind of better than the First Order rifle, it was quickly forgotten. But take a look at your inventory. You see that symbol? You might think it takes AR ammo, but it doesn't. It's this weird other symbol. And then you realize this symbol also appears on the first order rifle. But what's even stranger is it's not just ammo for Star Wars weapons. It's on the Camara SMG as well. That was all the way back in chapter two, season seven. So what is it exactly? Well, it goes way further than that. In the second Avengers mode, all the way back in chapter one, we got the Shatari Blaster, and those use this ammo as well. All of those weapons have infinite ammo, which is why you've never been able to pick it up off the ground. Or have you? Because there is one surviving video of someone picking up this ammo type off the ground. And actually, this ammo belonged to the Chapter 1 Zapatron that Epic accidentally released into Fortnite. It was only in the game for a few hours in season one and it was found in supply drops. This French streamer opened up the drop and while everyone was focused on the Zapatron, they missed him picking up something called Cellule de Energy, also known as Energy Cells. This is Fortnite's lost ammo type and it makes sense why it's in the game. As we all know, Fortnite was originally Save the World and in that mode, the Energy Cells are actually an ammo type that never made it to the main game or so we all thought. It is in the game, just hiding behind infinite ammo weapons. That's cut and dry, but what about Fortnite's mushroom mystery? As some of you may know, in chapter two, season two, right at the end of the season when the storm was replaced by huge walls of water, there was a secret addition on the Fortnite map. We woke up one day and everyone was saying there was a mysterious mushroom in Weeping Woods. So I went to investigate and yeah, if you went up to a certain mushroom and emoted, he would grow and pop up out of the ground. He had face and arms and legs and he would emote with you and floss and giggle with a very weird laugh. And after he emotes, you could actually feed him 100 wood. So when you do this, he actually will follow you around and heal you by giving you shield. It was so weird and no one knew why he was there or what was happening, but people called him Bud the Mushroom. But after just one day, Epic came in and removed him. 
And just when we had forgotten about him, the mystery got deeper. A lot of people don't know this, but in chapter two, season eight, there was a hut added and it was called Madcap's Hut near Frenzy Fields. So the Madcap skin was leaked in the files a while ago, and now you could finally find him here in this hut. And Bud the Mushroom was also there, but this time if you emoted with him, he would no longer follow you around or heal you. Then after the collision event, remember we had that waiting screen with the procedurally generated music? We had theories that it would be a part of the next season, but it never was. And Fortnite never explained why they were there. This was truly one of Fortnite's weirdest mysteries, and now we have to talk about one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in Fortnite, the mystery of the bunkers. Now, a lot of people don't know this. The mystery is actually solved. In chapter one, YouTubers and fans were going crazy theorizing about what the mysterious bunker in Wailing Woods was all about. You couldn't break into the bunker, but what freaked people out was there was actually something beneath it. If you went into creative mode, you'd find that the devs had actually coded an empty room beneath the bunker. Fortnite would not do this for no reason, so there had to be some sort of explanation. But we had to wait years before we finally discovered what the bunkers were for. In the chapter two map, we actually had three bunkers this time, and we had to wait until season five to find out what it all meant. Because in that season, we got the Batman Zero Point comics, where Batman ends up on the Fortnite map, and of course, he's the world's greatest detective, so he ends up breaking into one of the bunkers and discovering that underground, there's a huge base for the IOs. They were using these bunkers to go to different parts of the map and transport goods and weapons. Now, this wasn't the craziest revelation, but at least it was a satisfying conclusion, just like Mr. Beast's secret Fortnite account. And finally, for the mystery of Mr. Beast. He is a Fortnite icon, and people always wonder, does he actually play Fortnite? So I wanted to get to the bottom of this mystery. As some of you may know, he actually used to play a good amount of Fortnite back in the day. He would play in every Friday Fortnite with different streamers. And back when he was growing his channel, he would actually do Fortnite related challenges because the game was so viral back then. And he wasn't a bad player. He was actually pretty solid. And he played on an account called Mr. Beast YouTube. But the thing is, no one could ever see his stats. On Fortnite Tracker, his profile is actually private. So I wanted to do some digging and there's this site called Wayback Machine and it lets you see what websites used to look like. So if at some point he didn't have it privated, we'd be able to find his stats. But unfortunately, nothing. So then I went to his most recent gaming videos to try to find him playing Fortnite. And I did end up finding an account, Jimmy.MBGaming. This account was actually granted his icon skin early for him to film a video so it has to be a primary account. So I looked it up on Fortnite Tracker and it actually does have some stats. I then used the Wayback Machine to find an older screenshot from December, which gave me even more info. It looks like this is his main account since he used it back in chapter three, season three. He played just five games, including a trio win where he dropped seven eliminations and then never played again. Why did Mr. Beast play Fortnite in season three? Was he trying to uncover the secret of the Herald at the reality tree? <laughs> Definitely not. Well, I've met Mr. Beast and I think I might know why. In season three, we got something that would bring even the busiest content creator like Mr. Beast back to Fortnite, the second Naruto collab. He is the biggest Naruto fan ever, so it makes perfect sense why he came back to get a few quick games in. So I guess Mr. Beast does play Fortnite, but only when the Naruto collabs come out. Thank you guys so much for watching.